Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Barrett, and this video is intended for my patients exclusively. If you've had surgery by another surgeon, please make sure to follow up with that surgeon for particular details about your surgery. And if you're having a medical emergency, please dial 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. Congrats on your breast lift procedure. You're gonna do fantastic. There's a lot of incisions that have to heal. Follow all the instructions in this video and you're gonna do great. If you had a breast lift without an implant, your recovery is going to be much faster than if you did have an implant. The main reason why is because we didn't have to put an implant underneath your muscle. So most of your activity can resume at two weeks. As opposed to if you did have an implant, you can't do any heavy lifting or upper body workouts until six weeks. Your incisions are gonna to need to be taped for at least six weeks, and then you can start to do the scar gel afterwards. First and foremost, you're gonna have a little bit of stretching sensation. And remember, we injected a lot of numbing medicines, you're not gonna have a whole lot of pain in your chest. I might feel a little uncomfortable, but that's gonna get better as the night goes on, and it'll be better by tomorrow. You can take Tylenol or CBD for pain. I recommend you don't take the Norcos. The Norcos are bad, they cause nausea, constipation, and they generally make you heal less fast, okay? So I'd, I'd rather you not take the Norcos, even though I would prescribe them, they're there as a backup. When it comes to pain control, the CBD is the best option for this. You take a full dropper full, put it underneath your tongue, let it sit for a few minutes before you swallow it, okay? It's gonna absorb better that way, and take another full dropper full at nighttime when you're about to go to bed. I did not put you in a surgical bra on purpose. If I did, you're wearing one. If you're not wearing one, it's on purpose. I do not put you in a surgical bra because I want the blood supply to reach the breasts. A t-shirt or loose fitting sports bra is the best option for your healing. Now you gotta remember that little patch behind your ear. Take that off as soon as you get home, but don't rub your fingers on your eye after you do so. If you leave it on, you will get blurry vision. Not a big deal, just take it off when you're ready. I want you to take the antibiotics as soon as you get home. The Keflex, you take one pill four times a day, spaced out every six hours. Don't wake up in the middle of the night to take it, all right? Take one before you go to bed, one when you wake up, until the bottle is empty. Now if it's clindamycin, it's one pill three times a day uh, until the bottle's empty. Remember, all the antibiotics need to be taken their full course. The only time I run into infections is when people don't take the full course of the antibiotics as prescribed. So make sure you do that. Next thing is the colase. Take one pill twice a day until you have a bowel movement. Once you're done with that, you no longer need to take the colase. All these medications can be taken on an empty stomach, so take them right away. It's not gonna look normal right away, okay? So I tell my patients, don't expect them to look pretty until at least six weeks. So if you look down and they look like aliens, don't worry, it's completely normal. That's gonna drop and settle or drop and fluff over the next six weeks. So have faith in that. Bras can be worn typically around the two week mark, okay? But we're gonna check on your post-op appointment to verify that. In the meantime, again, wear a loose fitting sports bra or a t-shirt. It is even normal to have a little bit of bleeding the first 24 hours. So if you look down, it's bleeding through your shirt or through the steri strips, that's completely normal. Don't worry, it will stop. I wanna talk briefly about steri strips. These are covering your incisions. If they fall off, no big deal. You wanna replace it with a Band-Aid, all right? Now, sometimes your body swells with the steri strip on it. And if that happens, it can form a blister. All right, and if that blister happens, that's okay, leave it alone. You can put antibiotic ointment on it twice a day and we will remove the steri strip in the office. If you get an allergy, it develops a severe rash that's red and insanely itchy, okay? It happens on all the areas where you see this steri strip. If that happens, remove all your steri strips, wash with gentle soap and water, and take Benadryl and Claritin to help ease the symptoms. If you have any questions, give the office a call. We close your incisions in multiple layers. The deeper layers are using absorbable sutures to hold your wound together. Sometimes your body extrudes those and spits them out in a, in a slight inflammatory reaction. And if that happens, it's not a big deal. It happens to about 20% of our patients. If you do see that happening, give us a call. We can take it out in the office. Or if you feel comfortable, you can pull it gently with a pair of tweezers and trim it with beauty scissors so that it dives down below the skin incision and then cover with antibiotic ointment for a few days or a steri strip. It's normal to have swelling. It's normal to have bruising. It's also normal to have a little bit of anxiety and depression after surgery. That's a normal feeling, okay? By walking three times a day and getting a little bit of sunlight or red light therapy, that will actually boost your mood. So make sure to do that if you're feeling that way. 
One device in particular will help with a lot of your swelling and bruising. It's called red light or light stim therapy. If you have a red light machine, use it right after surgery. You can put it right on the incision or right on your body. Uh, we also sell a handheld version of the light stim in our office. Ask questions about that your next visit. You can also take a shower 24 hours after your operation. You can get everything wet. I do not want you to take a bath, hot tub, swimming, or uh, getting in a body of water like, a, like the ocean or a jacuzzi. That just basically invites bacteria in. The pressure of the water can cause an infection. Shower is okay standing water is not okay. Overall, you want to be very healthy after your operation. Meditation to help lower your stress, okay? Smokers, um, you can't smoke for at least six weeks. For alcohol, uh, people that like to drink wine or drink beer, there's no alcohol consumption for the next two weeks. That's going to decrease your ability to respond to any infections. How should you sleep tonight? You should sleep slightly elevated for the first three nights. That's it, folks. Have a few extra pillows, sleep with your back upright. That's gonna help some of the initial swelling go down. After that, you can start to lay flat. And then after seven days, you can start to lay on your side as you feel comfortable. I wouldn't sleep on your stomach until about six weeks to avoid pressure on your breasts. If you are concerned about stretch marks, you can take a little bit of cocoa butter and vitamin E and place it far away from your incisions on your breasts. Okay, do not put them on your incisions. That's our territory to help you with the first few weeks. We're gonna keep that taped, right? We're gonna tape it once a week for the first six weeks. We're gonna take out the first layer of stitches at your first post-op visit, and we're gonna take out the second layer at your second post-op visit. Here's your exercise regimen, it's really easy. First two weeks, I just want you walking around. You don't wanna raise your heart rate up, okay? That includes sex, and any activity that's gonna stimulate you to raise your heart rate up, that's gonna cause bleeding, all right? Be very careful, no heavy lifting, anything over eight pounds, all right? That's be careful opening doors, pumping gas in your car, or anything that might require some additional exertion. Use two hands if you have to. Picking up children, I don't recommend it, but if you absolutely have to, wrap your arms around them and lift with your legs, okay? Not with your arms. After the first two weeks, then you can actually start to do some exercise. That's like walking upstairs or doing walking incline workouts or isolated leg workouts. We don't wanna do any upper body. At week four, we can start to do jogging with a supportive bra. At week six, you can actually start to do upper body workouts. Get excited, but use your body as a guide. If something hurts, take a day or two off before you get back at it. It. Now, it's normal to have some pain, some burning sensation, some little electrical tingles, zingers, everything that you could possibly think of might be happening in your breast. Guess what? Good news is it all goes away right around six weeks, okay, when that starts to settle down and when we start to do massage. That's your nerves waking back up from the trauma of the surgery, all right? We try to minimize that as much as possible, but your nipples might be numb during that time. They might be hypersensitive, but don't worry, that sensation starts to normalize as your healing progresses. Sometimes it may take up to six months for that sensation to either come back or get back down to normal. Don't worry, most situations, it does get back to normal. So I wanna to talk to you about some products that you should be taking after your surgery. It's really important to help you heal and help manage your symptoms. The first one I love is CBD, okay? I recommend this product, Wild Health CBD. You take a full drop or put it underneath your tongue right when you get home and a full drop or right before you go to bed, you can actually increase as needed. You will sleep like a baby and it'll actually calm your anxiety and calm down your pain to a manageable level. Magnesium is a great supplement for three main reasons. First, it helps control the muscle spasms that you get can be experienced as pain after surgery. Second, it helps with constipation, it helps keep you regular. And third, it helps you sleep at nighttime. The best way to take this is two of these capsules at nighttime right before you're about to go to bed. Arnica, this is a product we recommend. It has Arnica and bromelain in it, so that helps the swelling go down naturally, and it helps the bruising. What else do you need to take? Well, there's a product I also recommend. It's called Heal Fast. It's a vitamin supplementation that's designed to help you heal right after the surgery so that your body has the necessary nutrients to heal. You need to take five of these twice a day. I know that's a lot, but you need all of these nutrients to heal and to detox your body from the anesthesia. The other product is Masslimes. It has a whole host of enzymes, digestive enzymes. You wanna take four of these pills with every meal to help break down the food and help decrease your body's inflammation so that you heal faster. You can absorb the nutrients and it decreases inflammation in your body. This stuff has been proven to speed up your recovery. It is a must if you're gonna have any surgery by me. Lastly, scar gel. Pick up the Scanuva scar gel. You wanna use this on your incision twice a day. The reason why I like it, it's got silicone and a bunch of other fetal growth factors that help the incision heal. Plastic surgery is a stressful experience on your body and oftentimes we prescribe antibiotics. That's why I recommend the Probiotic 225, which is a powerful doctors only probiotic that you can take to help restore your gut flora and fauna after your surgery and after any antibiotic use, okay? There's packets in here, you use one a day, you can mix it into cold water, you can take it with antibiotics at the same time. And you wanna take one packet each day for at least two weeks, which is normally the amount of supply in each box.
we recommend that you get one of our post-op recovery kits. It has everything you can possibly imagine you'll need after surgery, including gauze, medical supplies in here, saline, hand sanitizer, sleep mask, earplugs, you name it. It is personally picked out by me so that you have everything you need to heal and recover and take care of your body after surgery. With your implants, you should have gotten one of these little cards. It's got all of your implant information on it right here. And if you didn't get it, call us right away. Take a picture of it with your phone. Save that image forever, all right? That is very important information. And it's important for you to register for your warranty, which you should do right now, okay? MentorDirect.com forward slash warranty. Fill out your information. The serial numbers will be provided on this card so that you can get coverage of your implants through Mentor Direct in case you have any problems with rupture or capsule contracture, okay? We don't make any money off of it. It is just there for you to cover financial assistance and in case you do get capsule contracture and it is worth every penny. One thing to be aware of after breast lift surgery is nipple necrosis. If your nipples are appearing dark, one is darker than the other, or one is colder than the other, several hours after the operation, it's not getting better, um, give us a call, okay? We might need to have you put a warm compress on that one side versus the other side to kind of reestablish the blood flow. But that's something we wanna be aware of right away. A lot of people ask me, when should I contact your office? Well, you're gonna do great for the majority of people. There's gonna be normal swelling. But if you notice a few key things, I want you to give us a call. If you notice that one side is dramatically more swollen than the other side, that could be a sign of a hematoma or severe bleeding, okay, on the inside. If you get a severe body rash, if you get severe pain, especially if it's on one side, that could also be a sign of a hematoma. Normal body temperature varies from 97 to 99 degrees. If you get a temperature of 101 or more, I want you to give us a call, okay, that could be a problem. Significant drainage from your incision, we're not talking a little bit of bleeding, but if you're getting pus draining out from your incision, that's something we should also uh, be made aware of. If you get redness that spreads around from your incision, that spreads out on one side or both sides, that could also be a sign of infection and we need to know about that. If you're unable to keep any food down for more than 24 hours or any fluids and you're feeling very dehydrated, you need to give us a call or you need to go to the emergency room. Congratulations on your breast lift procedure. You're gonna do fantastic. It is a long journey of healing, swelling, and recovery. Follow all the instructions in this video and you're gonna do great. Make sure to tag us in your recovery journey, all right? Hashtag Barrett Recovery is the best way to share your experience so other people can learn from your journey.